Welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute. I am trying out a new gadget of mine, and I'd like to talk with you about another gadget that is uh, pretty interesting. Marketing, very strong. Results, very mixed. Um, also, I'm outside. I'm not indoors, even though the topic of this series is Healthy Indoors, and it's because also the thing that I'm talking about today is not really about making the indoors a thing. It's about bringing the outdoors in. This thing is called a whole house fan. It's a lot like this fan that you see over my shoulder. It just moves air from one place to another. It's pretty simple, not a very complicated machine. But this one goes in the top floor ceiling so that it blows air from your house into the attic. Now, if you've ever been told that this is something that's going to save all of your worries in the summertime and it's going to solve your problems, make your house healthier, make your house more cost efficient, take away your energy costs, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to pick apart the marketing on this. One of our Patreon supporters who helps support the show, Home Diagnosis, uh, brought it up to me and said, hey, what do you think about this? Should I do this or this? And the marketing on this thing is just so sneaky that I just wanted to take a minute to talk about it because it's actually going to make your, your indoors less healthy in many cases. And it's important that you know that and that your mom and your neighbors know that. Um, so in my 12 years experience testing homes, in my experience building and living in the world's highest performance tiny house on wheels, and in my experience building this big house as a topic of season two of our television series, which you can see on PBS, I have uh, learned enough about the science of homes, and that's to do with the heat flow, airflow and pressure, moisture and air quality, and a whole house fan is going to impact all of these in maybe some negative ways. And so j let's just prepare you for a moment and pick apart this marketing. Okay, so here we are looking at whole house fans. Uh, bef we're not going to worry about how it works because you can look that up on your own. But I just want to show you that the benefits on this are totally crazy. First of all, instantly feel 5 to 10 degrees cooler. That is something that is not just exclusive to whole house fans. You can do that if you have any kind of air moving over your body. It makes you feel, I, I've normally heard four to eight degrees. That sounds like somebody in marketing said, oh, well, why don't we round it up to five to 10? So what that means is that you're going to just blow air into your body. You can use a ceiling fan. You can use a little USB powered fan that's right next to your computer. Um, you could use an oscillating fan like the one behind me. Any of that stuff is gonna work. Second thing on the list, save up to 50 to 90% on air conditioning cooling costs. What that means is that you're going to shut your air conditioner off. That's what they're expecting you to do. And in fact, if you were using a whole house fan, you would not want your air conditioning to be running at the same time. You will be shutting down your air conditioner in order to do this. Because what you're doing is opening up a bunch of windows on the ground floor and then turning on this fan on the top. And by the way, they hopefully will tell you exactly how many windows you need to open up, how many square inches or square feet. Because if you don't open up that many, you're going to have such a huge pressure differential, which I'm going to get to in a minute, that's going to create a suction on your house that can do bad things. We'll talk about that in a second. But this idea that 50 to 90 percent of your cooling costs are going to go away may be true in certain specific areas in the country or in the world. But in most places, absolutely not. One of the things that you are expecting your air conditioner to do in most places is dehumidify the space. If you turn on a giant fan that's going to flood your house with outdoor air, it's going to flood your house with outdoor humidity as well. And that actually can make you less comfortable. So moving on, expel cooking odors, pet dander, smoke, germs, gases, and other unworn airborne annoyances. Um, this is f hilarious to me because if you have cooking odors, what you need is a kitchen exhaust fan that you use all the time. You've probably heard me say this before if you listen to this channel. That's the number one thing that you can have in your home to control the indoor health. If instead you're going to try and turn on a fan that's in the roof of your top floor and blow the chemicals and the particles that are created by cooking all the way across all of the furniture and belongings in your house until it finally gets to that fan, they're going to stick to everything on the way. That's a crazy way to exhaust contaminants. So don't think about that. That does not work the way that they're expecting. Um, feel refreshed, cool, and comfortable with clean outdoor air. I already mentioned humidity is a thing that you do not want in your house outside. I'm in Atlanta right now, which is more heating dominated than cooling dominated, but still. It's 80 degrees and like 70% relative humidity right now. If I were to suck this air into my house on purpose, it would have potentially catastrophic consequences as far as the creation of 
microbiology. Um, I would have mildew and mold growing in my house um, just by flushing it with this high humidity air. But also, outdoor air is not always clean air. And I can give you a couple examples, and if you take the time to brainstorm, you could think of many more. One is pollen. In the springtime, when I would want to use a whole house fan like this, we have pollen in Atlanta and in many places in the southeast. And that means that if I was to open up my windows and pull outdoor air in, I'm pulling in a ton of contaminants that I just said I was going to be getting rid of with this fan. You can't have it both ways. Another thing is forest fires. Or if your neighbor is cooking and you don't like the smell. Or if you've got somebody smoking outside. Or if your uh, husband just cut the grass, uh, which is my job on this two-acre lot. And you don't want any of those particles, the dust from your dirt, driveway coming in, etc., etc., traffic smog, outdoor air, not always clean air. You want to filter it. That's a, a very important part of incoming mechanically ventilated air in a home is a filter that is between you and it. And a window screen is not a good filter. Also, no longer use manufactured and recycled air. Don't know what that means exactly. All air is recycled. And no air is manufactured, as far as I'm concerned. It's all made of chemicals that have been here for forever. They've just been mating with each other, reacting and separating. And so I don't know what that means exactly. But I think that they're trying to get you away from the idea of using ductwork. Ductwork, by the way, can be a beautiful thing. And you should tune into our channel if you're um, curious about that. Complete air exchange in three to four minutes. Okay. Here's the thing. Pressure and airflow, the way that we teach the science of homes, are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have an airflow without having a pressure differential. And where there is a pressure differential, if there's a hole in something, which a whole house fan is a hole in the top of your house, then you will have an airflow. So what it means when you have three to four air changes, or excuse me, a complete air exchange of all the air in your house every three to four minutes, which is way more, is that you are creating such a huge negative pressure in your house that that air is flooding in. If the pressure were to dissipate, you were to have actually no exhaust pressure, no depressurization of the interior space, the airflow would stop. So the fact that there is airflow means you're depressurizing your house. And that means that you're going to be sucking things potentially down chimneys, down flues. You can have things like if you have a water heater that's an atmospheric draft, and if you don't know what that is, explore our channel. Uh, it could backdraft, and you could be bringing carbon monoxide into your house. You could be bringing soot from the chimney into the house. All these things are bad. Help keep the world green. Again, don't know what that means exactly. Doing something as sloppy as what a whole house fan does to a house in today's world with COVID, for example, I don't think that that necessarily is the definition of green to me. Use a fraction of energy compared to AC. They already said that. So just wanted to point out to you that a lot of people are trying to sell you a lot of things, and it's going to get worse soon with all of the quarantine stuff and the COVID um, scare because everyone's going to have a solution for these things. Filters do work. Ozone generators do not work. Well, they do work, but they have such incredible side effects that you do not want to have anything to do with them. I would say that this fits into the same category. There are people who would do very well with a whole house fan, or if you have one, don't necessarily block it off right now. You always need to have your house tested to find out exactly how the dynamics are working, and that's the whole theme of this channel. So thank you very much for your time. Make sure that you subscribe to Healthy Indoors Magazine, which is free on the digital side. Uh, that's at healthyindoors.com. Please do comment, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time. Mm -hmm.